Hello, good evening. Welcome to Midweek Bible Study. Glad to be here again with us. And it is um, approximately about 15, 16 days to the new year. And we're totally excited at uh, what 2021 has been like for us. God has been faithful. Um, God's word has been proven true. It's truly been our year of ascent. And you know the beautiful thing about a word from the Lord is the fact that it never elapses. And so even though uh, 2021 is our year of ascent, what it means is that from 2021 further um, into the years coming, we will keep experiencing ascent. So God is just going to add again to that prophetic word in the days to come. Now, but I want to spend some time to prepare us for the days to come 2022 Uh, i want to spend some time to prepare us and that's why we'll have some of a series of teachings um, before 2022 now two important dates that you must keep at the back of your mind um, and and get ready for them number one is our annual year end thanksgiving service which is holding this sunday 8 a.m and 10 a.m that's you, you know what the Yoruba is called Isaliapoti, the, the lowest part of your box, the best of your clothes. That's when to bring it all out. Bring out your abadas, your dashiki, everything. And let's give God the highest praise and thanksgiving possible. And on the 31st of December, we will be having our New Year's Eve service. All right. Uh, all at the band. <laughs> praise God forevermore. Now, the greatest asset in the life of any man, any individual, the greatest assets after salvation. In fact, when you study the Old Testament, it was the greatest assets because um, Adam did not need salvation, save that um, the fall happened. Okay, But in our dispensation, after salvation, the greatest asset for any individual on the face of the earth is access to the voice of the Lord. There's nothing more important than that. In fact, when you study the ministry of the Holy Spirit, it is actually um, five over seven um, 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 related to the voice of the Spirit in bringing counsel and wisdom and to sevens, power. And that's talking about the seven spirits of God. You find out that um, two manifestations of the spirit is given to power, whereas five is given to direction, instruction, guidance, and all the rest. You study in the book of John, the gospel of John, and then you find Jesus talking from John chapter 14 to John chapter 16 about the ministry of the comforter. And consistently in different words, um, he tells us about the ministry of the comforter being to bring us into the truth, to guide us, to remind us. You see, so you find out that um, we got saved, that the Holy Spirit may indwell us. And the primary um, essence of the indwelling of the Spirit of God is to bring us the voice of the Lord, counsel from God's Spirit. And so, uh, in the days ahead, please know that the most important thing for you would be the voice of the Spirit of God, the voice of the Lord. And accessing it is something that we must give ourselves to, accessing it. Now, a couple of things here that we must say very quickly. Um, Let me just give you a few thoughts very quickly um, in just a bit. Now, in Joshua chapter 3, I'd like us to see Joshua chapter 3, verse 1. Joshua chapter 3 and verse 1. It says, And Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host. And they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet ensure that there's a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come near not unto it, that you may know the way by which you must go. For you have not passed this way before, heretofore. 
It says that you may know the way that you must go, for you have not passed this way here to fall. And that's important. It says, you've not passed this way here to fall. Now, you know why he said that? And why this is instructive for us is that we have not passed this way here to fall. We have not passed 2022 before. You have passed 2020. You have passed 2021. You have passed 2010. You have passed 2012. You have passed 2016. But 2022, only one person has passed it. His name is the Spirit of the Lord. And that's why the voice of the Spirit of God, the voice of the Lord, is your greatest asset. That's your greatest asset. So look at Joshua chapter 3 and verse 4. He says, That you may know the way by which you must go. There is a way by which you must go. Not all ways are ways of success. Some ways are ways of death and destruction. Some ways are ways of pseudo-success. It says that you may know the way by which you must go. For you have not passed this way head to fall. If we have not passed this way head to fall, how then do we know the way by which we must go? By the ministry of the Spirit, the Ark of the Covenant and the Levites represented the ministry of the Spirit to the children of Israel. Glory to God. And so it's key that we um, listen in to what the Lord has to say to us here. Now, Isaiah chapter 48, verse 17, very important. Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 17. Isaiah 48, verse 17. It says, Thus yet the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I want you to observe that. Your Redeemer. So after he redeems us, he brings us salvation. He says, I am the Lord who teacheth thee. So there's the revelation of him as Redeemer. But that's not enough. Redemption delivers us now. This is beautiful. Redemption delivers us from the power of the enemy. But that's not what helps us enjoy our inheritance. It is the leadership, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the voice of the Lord that helps us enjoy our inheritance. 2022, you are going to walk in the fullness of your inheritance. In the name of the Lord Jesus. So many have known him as the Redeemer. And that's beautiful. But it says, I am the Lord thy God which teacheth thee to profit. So he must move from just being Redeemer to teacher. I am the Lord thy God which teacheth thee to profit. The Redeemer does not bring you into profit. Look at it again. Thus said the Lord thy God. Thus said the Lord thy Redeemer. The Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, and which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. So after he has redeemed us, after we have known him as our redeemer, he then must become our teacher that leads us by the way that we should go. Do you observe that again? Joshua 3, 4, we saw it. There's a way that thou must go. Now look at it again. That thou shouldest go, must go, shouldest go. So there's a way that you should go. Is it, but, but it's not in you to know by yourself what way to go. That's why the voice of the Lord is the most important asset of the believer. It says, all oh, that thou hast hearkened to my commandments, to my instructions, then your peace would have been as a river. Peace in the Old Testament is the same word used for prosperity. So you can see your prosperity would have been as a river. If you only had hearkened to my instructions, and your righteousness as the ways of the sea. Now, I want you to show you this. If we find the way that we should go, if we allow him to teach us, look at what he says will happen. Your peace would have been as a river. Your righteousness as the ways of the sea. Your seed as the sand. Your offspring like the gravel thereof. His name, your name shall not be cut off, not destroyed before the Lord. Look at these blessings. Look at these blessings. The Bible says that God let the children of Israel carry them on the wings of eagles. Praise God. Oh boy. I, I, I want to show you that very quickly. Say with me the voice of the Lord. 
the voice of the Lord is my greatest asset. The voice of the Lord is my greatest asset. The voice of the Lord is my greatest asset. Look at Exodus chapter 19 verse 4. It says, you have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. Powerful. It says, I brought you unto myself. Glory to God. Okay. So, the voice of the Lord is your greatest asset. Now, look at Genesis chapter 3 and verse 8. Genesis chapter 3 verse 8. This is in the garden. It says, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking. Powerful. The voice was walking. The voice was walking. They heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Okay. Powerful. Powerful. So the Bible says that God will come fellowship with them in the cool of the day. Then they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the cool of the day. So they had been blessed of the Lord, given the garden of Eden. But right after that was the voice of the Lord God. Now, and I like to tell people, you know, man fell because he listened to the wrong voice. He listened to the voice of the serpent. In fact, let me read you what, what the Lord said to Adam. Genesis 3 verse 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of your wife. So it was the voice. Say with me, the voice. The voice. The voice. So, your life is always a reflection of the voice you follow. It's always a reflection of the voice you follow. If Adam had followed the voice of the Lord, we would not have the troubles we have in the world today. Think about it. The whole world turned thrown into turmoil. Tens of thousands of years, billions of people on the face of the earth, all of it affected by listening to the wrong voice. That's how important this is. You know, people think, oh, is it not just? It's not just. The voice is your destiny. The voice is your life. Hallelujah. And I pray for you today that God will anoint your ears to hear his voice in the name of the Lord Jesus. Every spiritual dullness, every spiritual deafness is destroyed by the anointing this evening in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. In his voice is your prosperity. In his voice is your peace. In his voice is your righteousness. In his voice is your longevity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord. Now, but it's key to know that there are several voices in the world. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I want to show you that. 1 Corinthians the 14th chapter and the 10th verse. It says, There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world and none of them is without signification. You see that? It says, this is Paul speaking. He said, there are many kinds of voices in the world and there is none of them that does not have a significance. There's a definite reason why those voices exist. So the voice of the Lord is one voice, but there's several other voices. In fact, I could give you a few of them that um, there are lots of them, but the ones that I think are really, really, really critical uh, to, 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 for you to know. You have the voice of the people. Oh, that's a very powerful voice. The Bible tells us that Saul, God had told him, destroy the Amalekites. But the people said, no, 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 don't destroy, don't destroy everything. And he said, because the people, and he lost the kingdom because he chose to listen to the voice of the people, not the voice of the Lord. That's powerful. So the voice of the people. You know, the voice of the people is what you see on social media popular opinion, ideas, ideologies, philosophy, the voice of the people. There's the voice of the people concerning the marriage institution, the voice of the people concerning money and giving, the voice of the people concerning Christian doctrines, practices, and disciplines. The voice of the people. The voice of the people includes the voice of your family, includes the voice of your relatives. I mean, the serpent spoke to Eve and Eve spoke to Adam. And when God was going to speak to Adam, he said, you have listened to the voice of your wife. 
So the voice of your family, it's part of the voice of the people, people closest to you. The main people who are walking outside the will of God because of well-meaning voices. They're not wicked people. The well-meaning. Well-meaning people. Glory to God. Okay, so the voice of the people. Then you have the voice of the flesh. Oh yeah, that's a powerful one. The way of your flesh, what your flesh wants. And the voice of the flesh can be loud. The voice of your flesh. Then you have something close to the voice of your flesh, but it's a bit different. The voice of your mind. That your logic, your education, your experiences, your history. You want to go in a direction that you feel the Lord is leading you. And then logic comes against it. The voice of your mind. It's a powerful one as well. You know why all of this is important is all of these voices can be loud in your life save that you train yourself. In fact, save that you train yourself. The voices that you give attention to the most will be the loudest in your life. Will be the loudest in your life. You have the voice of the world. The voice of the world is very different from the voice of the flesh or the voice of the mind. It says, them as having loved this present world. The voice of the world, the allure for things and all the rest. You have the voice of the world. Then you have the voice of the word. Now this is coming to the good ones. <laughs> you got the voice of the word of God. The word of God has a voice. It has a voice. We're going to come to that. And then you have the voice of the spirit. Well, before you come to the voice of the spirit, uh, and the voice of the word, you have the voice of your prophet. It's That's an Im important voice in your life as well. The voice of your prophet is so key. Where God uses his servant, particularly the one he's established over your life, to confirm the things that he's saying to you. Many times, uh, sometimes, it, it's even the voice of the prophet that that points you to the fact that God has been saying this to you. You just have not been listening. So the voice of your prophet, the voice of the word, and then the voice of the spirit. The voice of the spirit. Hallelujah. The voice of the spirit. Now, Jesus made a very profound statement in John chapter 10. He said, my sheep know my voice. So, the voice of the Lord is part of the inheritance of the believer. It is part of the redemptive package of the believer. It is an anomaly for the sheep not to know his voice. My sheep know my voice. That's what Jesus said. And the voice of a stranger, they will not follow. You see that? The voice of the stranger. The voice of a stranger, they will not follow. He said, my sheep know my voice and the voice of a stranger they will not follow. So the voice of the Lord is available to us. In fact, let's see if we can draw a few thoughts from there. John the third chapter. I want you to see that. Glory to God. Say this to me. I am his sheep. I know his voice. I am his sheep. I know his voice. Everything that Jesus died for and purchased for us is at the mercy of the voice of the word and the voice of the spirit. Say that you know these voices, you're not going to enjoy the things he's died for. John chapter 10, in verse um, 4, verse 3, To him the potter opened and the sheep hear his voice, and he called his own sheep by name. And lead them out. Now say this with me. I am his sheep. Oh, I want you to say as though you meant it. I am his sheep. You know, David said, We are the sheep of his pasture. We are the sheep of his pasture. And then he says that um, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. I want you to observe that. He assumes that you will hear his voice. The problem is, don't harden your heart. So David already tells you that the sheep, you know, because David was a shepherd. So he, he already knew that sheep hear the voice of the shepherd. Okay, so say this with me. I am his sheep. I 
know his voice. I am his sheep. I know his voice. Say it one more time. I am his sheep. I know his voice. Say this. It is not a struggle. I am acquainted with the voice of the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at what it says. It says, when he put forth his own sheep, verse 4, he went before them and the sheep follow him and they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. So say this to me. I know not the voice of strangers. Say it again. I know not the voice of strangers. I am a sheep. Now, to give you um, an idea to concerning this, I, I want you to see um, Psalm 95. Psalm 95, and we're going to ex expound on it in just a bit. It says from verse 6, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he's our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Immediately he said that. He said, today, if you will hear his voice, I want you to observe that. Harden not your heart as in the provocation as in the days of temptation in the wilderness. So, the in the mind of the shepherd, this is important because in talking about the voice of the Spirit, the voice of the Lord in our lives, in John chapter 10, Jesus hearkens into the shepherd and the sheep, and that the sheep know the voice of the shepherd. In the, in the mind of anyone who understands the relationship between sheep and shepherd, like David, like Jesus, because they lived in Oriental cultures where you had a lot of sheep and, sheep and shepherd, uh, um, relationship the the sheep all the sheep needed to be safe was follow the voice of the shepherd all the sheep needed to be fed was follow the voice of the shepherd all the sheep needed to be all that it could be was follow the voice of the shepherd the sheep did not need to be wise in fact it said that sheep are some of the most foolish animals on the earth yet they are some of the most protected some of the most loved some of the most scared, some of the most prosperous. And you know the reason why? They lean not on their own understanding, but on the understanding of the shepherd. The sheep does not have to be wise by itself. The lion is wiser, the deer is wiser, the serpent is wiser. But none of them enjoys the care that the sheep enjoys. And that's because it does not have to be wise by itself. All it has to do is to know and follow the voice of the shepherd. So look at what it says. It says, we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, when you read it in the Hebrew, when you hear his voice, not if, when, he uses the term, when you hear his voice. So associated with sheep, again here in Psalm 95, as we saw in John chapter 10, is that the sheep hears his voice. So say this with me. I am the, I am his sheep, I am the sheep of his hand. Say it again. I belong to his, to his pasture. Say it again. I belong to his fold. Therefore, I hear his voice. Glory to God. Glory to God. All right. Now, let's see something here again in that book of Psalms. Because David was a shepherd. So he understood the relationship between shepherd and sheep. Which is the relationship between the believer and the voice of the Lord. In verse 1, it says, the Lord is my shepherd. Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. Powerful. Now, look at what happens. Remember, I, I want you to keep at the back of your mind everything we have read about sheep and shepherd. The relationship between the sheep and shepherd is voice. The sheep knows the voice of the shepherd. This is important. We're going to see some other things in Psalm 95 in just a bit. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You see that? I don't have to be skillful. I don't have to be smart. I don't have to be intelligent. I don't have to be connected. If the Lord is my shepherd, I will not want. Now, what is the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep? The voice of the shepherd. In essence, if I have the voice of my shepherd, I shall not want. So you see, immediately, now you see, when he says the Lord is my shepherd, I want you to put in that place the voice of the Lord or the voice of the shepherd. 
So he begins to show us what the voice of the shepherd will do for us. Number one, if we know and follow the voice of the shepherd, we shall not want. In 2022, you shall not want. If you know and follow the voice of the shepherd, you shall not want. And because now you know and you follow the voice of your shepherd, I declare over your life that in 2022, you shall know no lack, no want in the name of the Lord Jesus. And look at what he says again. He makes him to lie down in green pastures. He leads him beside the still waters. You see that trouble is out of your life. Problems are out of your life. Challenges are out of your life. Why? Because the voice of the Lord. I want you to observe that. He didn't say, I know how to lie down in green pastures. He didn't say, I know where the green pastures are. He didn't say, I know where the still waters are. He makes me to lie down. He leads me beside. Look at what he says. He restores my soul. Look at it again. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. That's his purpose and his plan for your life. Your soul is restored. There's no weariness. There's no depression. You see what I'm talking about? You're full of the joy of the Holy Spirit. You're full of the comfort of God. You're full of the strength of God. You know why? The Lord is your shepherd. Now, you know, I heard the minister say this, and it was such a powerful statement. He says, yea, though I walk through the valley. Now, so from verse 1 to verse 3, the Lord led, the Lord led, the Lord spoke, the Lord made him do this, the Lord restored his soul. But verse 4, yea, though I walk, the moment you start walking by yourself and the Lord is no more leading you, then you go to the valley of the shadow of death. You see that? He says, but I fear no evil for thou art with me. And this is the important, beautiful thing. Even when you go your way, the Lord is still with you. He says, thy rod and thy staff comforts me. The rod and the staff are given for correction and adjustment. So the, the shepherd takes the rod and hits the sheep, go this way. You see that? So even in that place, it's still the leadership of the shepherd that keeps the sheep a track on track and safe. He says, Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anoints my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, because of your voice, remember, the Lord is my shepherd. You can interchange it with, I know the voice of my shepherd. I know the voice of the Lord. He says, Because of all of this, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me every day of my life, and I will dwell in the presence, the house of the Lord, forever. Now, so you see this, these all are not things just to claim. It's not just, these are not just things to confess. All of these are a product of the voice of the Lord that we know and that we follow. And now I pray for you that your heart will be acquainted with the voice of the Lord. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the voice of a stranger, you will not follow. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You still here? Now, so, the first thing in terms of getting acquainted with the voice of the Lord is the voice of the Word. The Word has a voice. In fact, I love the way Brother Hagin put it. He said, the written scriptures was, uh, it was Mark Hankins who said it. He was talking about confession. But there's a statement he made that I think is powerful. He said, the, the, the word was first spoken before it was written. So there's a voice behind the word. There's a voice behind the scriptures. This is so important. There's a voice behind the scriptures. Say that with me. There's a voice behind the word. There's a voice behind the scriptures. Now, the voice, you see, the second level is the voice of the Spirit. That's the voice. Uh, we're going to talk, talk about that in what witness, the voice of the Spirit in your heart. But the voice of the Spirit that will speak in your heart is the same voice that spoke all through the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's the same voice that has been written down. The things he said are the things that have been written for us in the Scriptures. So the first way to be acquainted with the voice of the Spirit is to be acquainted with the Word. Psalm 119 verse 105, very popular portion of the Bible. Psalm 119 verse 
105. It says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So, God's word is the lamp for our feet. Now, here's how it works. The word of God is the logos of God, the sum total of his thoughts, his ideologies, his philosophies, his principles, the written scriptures, is the logos of God. Now, so what happens is this, is that the more we give ourselves to meditating on the scriptures, let me show you how this works. The more we give ourselves to meditating on the scriptures and staying therein, the clearer the voice of the Spirit becomes to us. Now, there are instructions in the Word. Generic instructions. But, but I, 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 love, uh, I, I love to use this analogy. The Word is a light unto my feet and a guide unto my path. That's what David said. Now, but I hope you know that if no matter how lit a road is, when you get to a, um, a, a T-junction, now you need a guide to tell you whether to go right or left. I hope you get what I'm saying here. Now, so the straight road is the generic will, plan, and purpose of God for our lives. The word of God would light that way. Okay? But then there are two junctions of life. Where to walk, where to live, who to marry, what to do, what not to do, when to do it. Those T junctions of life, those, those crossroads of life, you then need a guide at those junctions of life. No matter how lit the road is, at the junctions of life, the T, 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 um, t, t junctions of life, the crossroads of life, you need a physical guide who then tells you turn right, turn left. Are you following what I'm saying here? But the guide is useless except there is illumination, which means you don't need a guide if you can't even see. So the first level is the light that comes from the word of God. And then the second level is the instruction that comes from the guide. So many people don't enjoy the ministry of the spirit. They can't hear the voice of the shepherd, not because he's not speaking, but because the lights are off. The guide cannot be seen and his ministry cannot be enjoyed except everywhere is well lit. So the first step is giving yourself to the word of God. Let me put it this way. The more of the word you meditate in and on, the easier it is to know and to be led by the voice of your shepherd. Glory to God. Now in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but it shall meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So you meditate therein day and night. So that's the first thing. Many people, and listen to me, if you're following this, I want you to hear very carefully. Many people read the word of God looking for revelation. That is a wrong reason to read the word. You don't eat yam for carbohydrates. Nobody's thinking of carbohydrate when he's eating yam. Will it give him carbohydrate? Yes. You eat the food because you like it, you need to, and you, sh you need sustenance. That's the primary essence. Not because you Revelation is carbohydrates. Revelation is the protein and all of that. But we're eating the word because we love the Lord and we want to fellowship with him. And we need sustenance. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. Glory to God. <clears throat> so the first responsibility you have is to acquaint yourself with the word. The more disciplined you are with reading and studying and meditating the word, the clearer the voice of the spirit will be to you. But Hagen said, the same voice that will speak in your heart is the voice that uttered the word powerful statement. Let me say that again. The same voice that will speak in your heart is the same voice that wrote the scriptures, uttered the scriptures. And so for you to be certain of the voice of the shepherd, of the Lord in your heart, you must have given yourself to the word of God. So that's the first thing. 
The second one there is the voice of the Spirit. Now, very if we have some other time, I probably will explain this extensively, but let me just give it to you. For, for those of us that are Bible students, you can go back <clears throat> and study these things for yourself. The, the Holy Spirit is a spirit. He's a person. <clears throat> but he can speak to your spirit or he can speak to your body. I want you to understand these two levels. He can speak to your spirit or he can speak to your body. Now, many times people, people, um, people, people assume that the voice of their mind is the voice of the spirit. I heard Bishop David Edipo tell a story one time. He thought the church was going to start in Joss and they were going to plant the church in Joss. They had started everything and then the Lord said, no, the church is not starting here. And he said, Lord, but I thought I was sure this was it. And the Lord said to him, he said, one day you were playing table tennis in Joss and you said in your heart, the weather is good, the climate is beautiful. This would be a nice place to plant a church. He said, that thought is what has become a voice to you. That's how powerful thoughts are, suggestions. Now, uh, if I don't have the time to explain how this works, please note it as well. You can go and study it for yourself. One of the ways to ascertain the voice of the Spirit in our lives is through elimination. What do I mean by elimination? There are several voices you have to eliminate. Now, if you know the character, the character of these voices, you can then eliminate them. For example, the voice of your mind is always logical is always logical looks for the easiest best fastest cheapest and that's not to say the holy spirit can't lead us in that direction but primarily it's always logical always logical now the voice of your mind does not produce peace whereas the voice of the spirit produces peace if we have the time i'll tell you the character of these different voices in your life the voice of your mind you can write these things down I mean, I don't think we have the time, so let me just see. The voice of your mind is compelling. Almost brings you into slavery. Almost like you have to, you have to, you have to, you have to. The voice of the spirit is suggestive. It's persistent but suggestive, which means he does not compel. He does not bring us under compulsion. He suggests but remains persistent, which means there's no compulsion but there's a consistent suggestion that you can't get away from. I don't know if you've ever had those thoughts in your, that you just can't get away from. The voice of your mind is telling you, you better keep that money. The voice of your spirit is telling you, you better sow that money. And it's a suggestion. You should sow that money. Let me put it that way. The voice of your mind says, you better keep that money or else you, you're, you're going to die of starvation. The voice of the spirit is telling you, you should sow that money. You should give that money. It'd be nice if you gave that money. Glory to God. Do you see the difference here? So by elimination, 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 the voice of your flesh is always selfish. It's never sacrificial. The voice of the spirit is always sacrificial, always full of love. Glory to God. Now let's talk about that voice of the spirit. I said there are two levels to it. Now we're talking about the voice of the Lord. Obviously, the Lord does not lead us only by his voice. He leads us as well through spectacular occurrences, angels, dreams, visions, prophecies, and things like that. But we're focused here on the voice because 95 to 98 percent of the leadership of the Spirit of God in your life is through His voice. Spectacular occurrences should not be and not the primary way that He leads us. All right. So you have the voice of the Spirit to your spirit. It's called inner witness. That's what we call an inner witness, a hunch, a feeling, a perception, the inner witness. Then you have the voice of the spirit to your body. It's almost as though your external ear hears it. I've had it only about twice in my life. You might walk through your entire Christian experience once actually. You might walk through your entire Christian experience and never ever have it. It's, an, it's almost as though the spirit of God is speaking to you from outside. The other one is the Spirit speaking to you from inside, okay? So the voice of the Spirit to your spirit is that inward witness. It's gentle. But the voice of the Spirit to your external ear is what we call the audible voice of the Spirit. 
the audible voice of the Spirit. Now, if somebody occupies the office of a prophet, chances are that he will have a lot more of the audible voice of the Spirit. The average believer is led by the inward witness. Glory to God. Now, Galatians chapter 4, verse 6, Romans chapter 8, verse 16, they speak about the same thing, that we have received the Spirit of adoption. It says, this Spirit Christ within us, Abba, Father. Roman, that's Galatians 4, verse 6, Romans 8, 16. It says that the Spirit of God beareth witness with our spirit, bears witness with our spirit. Cry it. A witness is consistent. Crying is consistent. So you see something about the inward witness. It is consistent but not compulsive. This is important. Galatians 4, 6, he crieth. Romans 8, 16, he witnesses. Both of them have something in common, consistency. Glory to God. Now let me give you a practical example here. Acts chapter 27 and verse 9. Are you getting anything today? Say this with me. I know his voice. Glory to God. I know his voice. I know his voice. Therein lies your prosperity. Oh, I pray for you that in the name of Jesus, 2022 will be marked by the voice of the Lord. No more assumptions, no more presumptions. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will live with certainty and assurance of his purpose, his plans and his instructions. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 27, Paul was at sea with a couple of people as a prisoner. It says, now when much time was spent and when sailing was now dangerous because the fast was already passed, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the laden and ship, but also of our lives. So Paul said, there will be hurt, much damage, not only of the ship and the laden, but also of our lives. <laughs> but I want you to observe something. He says, I perceive, say with me, I perceive. He didn't say, God told me. You see that? I want you to see how powerful this is. He's talking about the voyage being with much hurt and much damage of the laden of the ship, even of lives being lost, if possible. He says, all of that came by perception. Not, a, not, not an audible voice, a perception. He says, nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And you know the reason why? He says, because the haven was not commodious to winter in, the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attend to Phoenix and dare to winter, which is an haven of Crete and lying toward the southwest and northwest. So they were saying that, listen, we've checked the weather. Everything is fine. This man is just coming and saying, I perceive. <laughs> Verse 13, and when the south wind blew softly, so you can imagine, after Paul said, I perceive, then the wind began to blow very softly. Supposing that they had obtained their purpose, which means, you see, Paul, what you said is wrong. Losing fence, they sailed close by Crete. So everything on the external looked normal and right. The only thing Paul had was a perception. I want to show you how the inward witness works. That everything may be logical and right outside, but inside, something is just not right. You're dating a young man, and everybody thinks he's the best thing after sliced bread and maybe Omicron, <laughs> a sliced bread. But they don't know he's Omicron for you, COVID-19 for you. They have no idea. And God's spirit keeps nudging on your heart. Now, let me explain something about the inward witness. You will have no explanation. Paul could not explain why he felt that way, why he perceived that, what he perceived. He perceived. He just perceived. And after perceiving, all the circumstances even began to look right and righter. To prove him wrong. So we don't go by external circumstances. We don't go by external. We don't look at the weather and say, oh, you know, the weather is right. So what we are feeling. No, we go by the inward witness. Let me show you what happens here. Verse 14. But not long after there arose it, there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Herocledon. It's interesting. Why didn't the wind blow when Paul perceived why was it when everybody said, listen, you think about it, Paul was not a sailor. The master said there's nothing wrong. The owner of the ship said there was nothing wrong. The captain said there was nothing wrong. Then if you read it, it says, 
the, the Bible says that um, the more part advised. So I want you to see certain things here. Number one is the voice of the people is not always the voice of God. The more part advised, that's the voice of the people. Then look at it. The voice of circumstances and situations. Everything looked right. Then look at it. The voice of logic, the master and the captain is a, a, a trained sailor. So you see the voice of logic. That's the voice of your mind. You see the voice of the people. You see the voice of circumstances. Everything proving that what Paul felt in his heart was wrong. Interesting. Your perception is greater than any indices on the stock market. Your perception is greater than the voice of the people. Your perception is greater than any circumstantial evidence. Never forget what I just told you. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, you know the story. The ship was broken in parts. Verse 15. When the ship was caught and could not be up against the wind, we let her drive. Verse 18. It says, We being exceedingly tossed with the tempters, the next day they lightened the ship. They threw everything away. The third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. Neither sun nor stars in many days appeared. Can you imagine? If they had just followed somebody's perception. He says, and no small tempest lay on us. All hope that we should be saved was, was then taken away. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me. You should have listened to me. <laughs> and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. I want you to see how great this event was. Yet all that God gave Paul was a perception. I perceive. Verse 22. It says, Now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. So Paul now says, There shall be no loss. Any, but nobody shall lose his life, but the ship shall be lost. How did he know this time? For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. So you see this now. This is spectacular guidance. In this case, it was an angel that brought him this information. Glory to God. But the first case, he said, I perceive. You see the same person? One was a perception. One was a supernatural guidance. Now, you know why I believe that God had to send an angel to bring this information to Paul? Because the people will not have listened to a perception. So they needed spectacular guidance. And because Paul needed to get to where he was going to, God needed to save the ship, save the people, and ensure that Paul was safe. Glory to God. Are you still with me? So the voice of the Spirit is a perception. It will go against the voice of circumstances most times. It will go against the voice of the people most times. It will go against the voice of your mind and logic most times. But a couple of things you notice about it. It is an inward perception, a quiet assurance, a knowing without explanation. Let me say that again. A knowing without explanation. You can't explain it, but you know it. A knowing that cannot be shaken away. It is not compulsive, but it is persistent. It comes with peace and assurance. Are you following what I'm saying here? Now, it's an inexplicable knowing, unrelenting and repetitive. Let me see if I can get you one other example in the New Testament. Oh, hallelujah. Are you getting anything today? I'm being blessed as I'm sharing this with you. Okay. Now, look at Acts chapter 15. This was when the council was gathered together and they wanted to discuss, oh, should, should the Gentiles eat um, circumcised or uncircumcised food, blah, blah, and all the rest. Now, I'm not going to go through the story. Look at verse 25. It says, and it seemed good unto us. I want you to observe that. It seemed good unto us. Then look at verse 28. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us. So they wrote a letter to them, to the Gentiles, and says that um, you know, we, know, we don't lay extra burden on you. Don't let's bring Judaism upon you. Um, and so they were giving them guidelines to say, listen, live your life. Some of these things are Judaistic things. The only thing we're saying is that you abstain from meats offered to idols, that you abstain from blood and from things strangled and from fornication, from which if you keep yourselves, you do well, fear you well. Don't disturb yourself about the religion of the Jews. You're now born again. You're now Christians. You're now believers. 
But I want you to observe, as important as this was, what did they say? For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us. They did not say the Holy Ghost told us. They did not say we heard God. It seemed good. It just sat well with us. Are you following what I'm saying? Most of the guidance of God's Spirit in your life, the voice of the Lord in your life, is that inward witness. Are you following what I'm saying? This is important. Now, how do we... I already gave you one key to ensuring that you can pick on that witness. It is by spending time in the Word of God. Meditating on the Scriptures. Spending time in the Word of God. Number two, let me give you a quick one, is praying much in the Holy Spirit. Meditating on the Word and praying much in the Spirit. Using every passing moment to pray in the Spirit. And when you're not praying in the Spirit, you're confessing Scriptures. This is important because the praying in tongues is the language of the Spirit. The Word is the voice of the Spirit. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. It's filled true and true with the anointing of God's Spirit. I have received grace upon grace. Glory to God. I have received grace for and for grace. Hallelujah. Of His fullness. Glory to God. You, you're declaring the scriptures in every passing moment and then praying in the Spirit. Your heart becomes sensitive to peak on the instructions and the witness of the Holy Spirit. Now let me just read you one more thing. Proverbs chapter 3. For today, Proverbs chapter 3. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. He gives us keys to picking his voice. Verse 5 and 6. Number 1. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. He will not mismanage your life. Trust him. I'm speaking to someone today, trust him. He won't mismanage your life. There's no instruction that he gives that is grievous. The law of the Lord is not grievous. That's what David said. He won't mismanage your life. Trust him. The reason, you know, you cannot hear from a man. You won't listen to and hear from someone you don't trust. So you have to trust in him with all your heart. Or else his voice will be distant from you. Say this, I trust in you. Your plans for me are good and not of evil. If I follow your perception, it will lead me into your will. You have to believe that. You have to trust in him. Look at what he says next. And lean not onto your own understanding. Number one, trust in the Lord. Number two, like that sheep, lean not onto your own understanding. You know what lean means? Lean means you are standing, but you support it. So, you know, there are people who are trying to be led by God, but they still want to support it with their understanding. He didn't say, follow, your, follow not your own understanding. Uh -uh. He says, lean not, which means we're already standing. We say, oh, we trust in the Lord. But, you know, God, I, uh, well, yeah, you know, I, uh, for example, the Lord says, um, bring Isaac. And you go, well, God, um, let me give you a hundred sheep instead. You know, leaning onto your own understanding while you're trying to trust in the Lord. He says, lean not onto thine own understanding. Verse 6, in all your ways acknowledge him, no matter how little it is. No matter how small it looks, involve God. Dear Lord, what do you have to say? Very important. I realize that the voice of the Spirit is clearer to those who consistently acknowledge their need for God. It's not only when you have the big issues in your life. Oh God, who do I marry? You never heard him on the small issues. It's now who do I marry? You will be confused, certainly. You'll be confused. And what is the result? He shall direct your paths. Do you see, I wanted you to see the steps there. I wanted you to see the keys there. Trust in the Lord with all your understanding. Lean not onto your own understanding, your, with all your heart. Lean not onto thine own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Then he will direct your paths. Hallelujah. In 2022, God will direct your paths. In 2022, you will no load lack, no want, 
your soul shall flourish. The works of your hand shall flourish. You shall enter into profits. Your peace and prosperity shall be like a river. Your seed, that is your products, shall expand like the sand of the seashore. Your offsprings like the gravel. Because you are acquainted with the voice of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever you are, I want you to lift your two hands towards heaven. I break the yoke of spiritual deafness in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare that every ear is open now in the name of the Lord Jesus. You are acquainted with the voice of your shepherd. I rebuke every foul spirit. Thank you, Lord. There are familiar spirits that know you so well, that know you so well and may mimic the voice of the Spirit of God to lead you in the wrong path. Today, I deliver you from those spirits. I declare that their hold over your life is broken now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Kai, you will take steps by the Spirit and come into wealth. You will take small steps. You'll be led by the Spirit into your inheritance. In the mighty name of Jesus, 2022 shall be stories of being led by the Spirit and coming into victories. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, we give you praise and we thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. What a time we've had in the presence of the Lord. God bless you. This is not a message you listen to once. I tell you the truth. You have to listen to it minimum five times and get your notepad and write out everything that I have shared here. You have to listen to it minimum five times. Glory to God. God bless you. See you on Sunday, 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. at our Thanksgiving service and then 31st for our New Year's Eve service. That service starts at 9.30 p.m. 31st December, 9.30 p.m. God bless you. Now, bring out your offerings and your tithes. You know you, you, do not, you do not receive from the Lord without ministering back to Him. It's, it's, it's wrong. You have to minister back to the Lord. So please take your tithes and your offerings wherever you are, your special seats. Those of you that made pledges and vows that you want to redeem, this is the time to do so. Now, well, we can't give physically, so we have to transfer. So the details will be on the screen. Precious Holy Spirit. I decree a blessing on every given this morning, this evening. I declare that your seed is blessed. Every tithe brings you ideas, concepts, and insights. You will operate under an open heaven. I declare that your seed returns back to you in a mighty, bountiful harvest in the name of the Lord Jesus. Whatever name you have given your seed, so it is. Now! In the name of Jesus, we bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If this is your first time with us ever online joining us, well, there's a link that will be provided there on the screen or better still in the chat section. Um, please feel it. We'd like to reach out to you. God bless you.